People have read it. What made you straight up, nope, out of a relationship? Story 1. I found myself repeatedly calling the authorities to help calm down my wife after she became dependent on a variety of prescription medications. I informed her doctors that the opiates for a ruptured vertebrae, stimulants for ADHD, Ambien for sleep, and various other medications for anxiety and depression, along with additional drugs to counteract side effects, were causing her to become aggressive. One particular incident when I called the authorities to defuse a difficult situation left me in tears. The officer simply remarked that he had already been there and asked when it would end. I believed I was managing things reasonably well. I held an office job where my colleagues were unaware of the situation, although my work had suffered significantly. I kept clothes and food in my car, just in case I needed to stay out for a while because she had convinced herself that I was part of a conspiracy. I had access to a gym on my way to work where I could shower or simply have some time to myself. I took care of all our household chores and errands because she was unable to work or do much of anything most of the time. Whenever she injured herself, she claimed it was an accident at the hospital, and she always attempted to visit a different one. We lived in a major city with multiple hospitals. The officer saw through her actions. Being perceived in that way and realizing that even that way of life was coming to an end was painful. I am now recovering from the divorce and enjoying the peace. Occasionally, I still experience unexplained panic, and I feel more secure with clothes and food stored in the car, but I feel much healthier. I am getting more sleep, and my blood pressure has mostly returned to normal. I no longer cry at work. Story 2. It wouldn't really be accurate to call it a relationship, as we only went on three dates, but I met this girl at a wedding. She was a friend of a friend, and we exchanged numbers that night. We texted for a while and then went on a date. The first date was probably a big red flag, but I brushed it off. We had connected on Facebook, and she noticed that she went to college with a girl I went to high school with. No big deal, until I found out she had been messaging that girl and asking her all these questions about me in high school, who I dated, what car I drove, etc. Anyway, the third date came around, and I wasn't really sure how long we would be together, so typically I wouldn't have taken her to a really nice restaurant so early in a relationship, but I was in the mood for steak, so I took her to a pretty high-end steakhouse. I have never been more embarrassed by someone's behavior in public in my life, and I have a six- and three-year-old at home now. She sent three martinis back because they weren't made correctly while being extremely insulting and rude about it. She ordered a steak medium and then got upset because she insisted she ordered it medium rare. Both the waiter and I told her she had ordered medium. She was making comments about what other women in the restaurant were wearing, and not very subtly. Then, despite me trying to leave without buying her dessert, she got a dessert menu and expected them to make her something that they didn't have on the menu. They had cheesecake, and she wanted chocolate cheesecake. Another outburst at the staff. On the way out the door, she made a point to stop and complain to someone loud enough for other customers to hear. When we got into my car, I was so embarrassed I pretended I had left my credit card on the table so I could go back in. I gave the waiter an extra $20 and apologized, telling him I was ending things with her as soon as I got to her place. He laughed and told me he wished he could see it. I didn't really give her a chance to say much. She called me a loser and stormed off. I haven't seen or heard from her since. Reddit Story 3 I was in a very long and toxic relationship with an ex. I had wanted to leave for years, but he would threaten to harm himself, and I would end up staying. I finally found the courage to walk away when I was diagnosed with several benign liver tumors and was told by the doctor that it was crucial to immediately and permanently stop taking hormonal birth control. I researched it on my own and confirmed that the single most important thing I could do to avoid further complications was to stop taking hormonal birth control for good. I informed my then-husband about the appointment, and he calmly said, well, that's going to be a problem. I was taken aback and asked, what do you mean? I'll go to the gynecologist as soon as I can get an appointment, and we can just use condoms until then. But he insisted that condoms were unacceptable because we were married, and not having sex until I got to the gynecologist was also unacceptable. What really shocked me was when he suggested that I should continue to take birth control as normal and just not tell the doctor. He'll never know, he said. Then he went on to suggest that maybe I could go on and off birth control so I'd be off of it before any follow-up appointments with this doctor to ensure that he'd never know. I was completely stunned, and I just looked at him and said, You understand this could endanger my life? This isn't about placating a doctor. This is about my life. He simply shrugged and said he wasn't using condoms and that I needed to figure it out. I did figure it out. I left him more than a decade ago and have never been happier. Reddit Story 4 When my now ex-wife came into the living room where I was sleeping on the couch after a fight and started lunging at me, she asked me if she reminded me of my stepdad who used to come into my room at night and stand over me before he dragged me out of bed by my ankles. He would then put the boots to me for whatever sins I had committed that day. She was the only person I had ever shared this with. She went out of town for work two days later, and when she came home, I was gone and in another state. It was remarkable the amount of abuse I put up with until that point. It dawned on me then that if I wouldn't let him hurt me if he had returned to my life, there was no reason to let her abuse me either. Asterisk edited to add, Thank you for all the kind words and support, 
especially the support given to others who shared their similar stories. Peace, happiness, and love to you all. Reddit Story 5 I was going through some tough times in my early 20s and was pretty desperate for any kind of affection, which is the only reason I took a couple of weeks to back out of this. The second time I ever met her, she told me to delete every girl's number from my phone, sister included. She then came over to my place, saw I had a full bookshelf, and ridiculed me for being a reader. In the same breath, she announced that she loved cocaine so much and wanted me to try it. Finally, I managed to escape, but by then she was already involved with two of my friends, who were obviously no longer my friends. The good news is, I've now been happily married for five years and consider myself incredibly lucky. Reddit Story 6 Holy Flashbacks Dated a guy who genuinely thought he was an anime character, a demon from hell who redeemed himself and fought other demons by night to lead a demonic revolution for the greater good, his words. He had a shrine of himself with a sword that he claimed was made by a Nepalese monk, made anime noises when he hurt himself, tried to start a gang who would fight in his name, pretended his real name was Japanese, and reinvented a whole part of his life. He'd transform every time he'd smell my period blood and refuse to get a real job, at 26, because his other job was too much pressure already. He broke up with me, I know, saying he was dark and I was light and it could never work because it would end up destroying us both and potentially the world. Edit. Forgot to mention he was calling himself the Shadow Slayer. With capitals. Edit 2. Oh, and he also thought he could control the thunder. Edit 3. Since I'm getting a little tired of victim shaming jerks who tell me this situation says more about me than it does about him, does it though? And ask me why I dated him in the first place, I'll answer here for everyone. He wasn't like this at first. I was just 18. And the day you get in a relationship with someone older, bigger, stronger, and who does irrational scary stuff, you'll realize you don't always think straight or do what must be done. I am not proud of having dated him, but it was nearly 10 years ago, and what's done is done. That said, thanks to everyone else for the rewards, laughs, and discussions. Reddit Story 7 I dated this girl who was extremely jealous. I couldn't hang out with my friends without her constantly calling me. Obviously, I couldn't do the same, because how could I be jealous? That would have meant I didn't trust her. That's annoying enough to end a relationship, but it was just the tip of the iceberg. After nine months, I found out from one of my friends, who also happened to be a close friend of hers, that she had been hiding her sexuality from me, she was actually bi. At first, I really didn't get why she did that, because I absolutely have no problem with these things. The mutual friend then told me that she was going around being intimate with other women. So basically, she was hiding her bisexuality so that she could be intimate with any girl she wanted to, without me even suspecting anything. Sometimes she even had threesomes with the girl's boyfriends. When I told her I knew everything, she started telling me that she didn't want me to know because those other people didn't really matter to her and she didn't love them. Needless to say, I noped out of there. Reddit Story 8 I had a strong attraction to her for a while but never had the chance to talk to her due to our conflicting work schedules. Then a colleague set us up, and I was thrilled. Our first date went really well, and we hit it off. We started spending as much time as we could together, talking on the phone every night, doing all the special things you do when you're starting a new relationship. Then she started coming over unannounced more often. She would say for a couple of nights, then a week, then two weeks. I would come home from work, and she would be in my house, sometimes intoxicated. The problem was she had almost been fired for an incident involving alcohol before and was lying to them about her sobriety. She would have a few too many drinks and then go off about her family or how I wasn't taking our two-month relationship seriously enough. The final straw came on Valentine's Day this year. She got extremely intoxicated to the point of not being able to walk on her own. After I rejected her advances while she was drunk, she became very upset. What followed was a couple of hours of her threatening to drive home drunk, sitting outside so the cold weather would freeze her, lying in my bed and calling my name until her voice became hoarse and alternating between manic laughter and crying. Two days later, once she was sober, I told her to leave. We had been dating for just around three months. It was the quickest turnaround ever for me in a relationship. Story 9 he wanted me to spend time only with him or my family. He checked my phone and wanted me to have only five chats, my mom, my dad, my sibling, and him. I could not talk, say hi, or hug my male friends, and eventually, I was not allowed to have them. I wasn't allowed to meet my girlfriends either. At some point, he took my phone and unfollowed every male on my Instagram. He used to come to my place and stay there with me to avoid going out. I dreamt about traveling to Japan, but he said no because at that time I really liked one Japanese actor and he was afraid I could meet him and fall for him. It was a toxic situation. I had the courage to break up only after two years of the relationship. He stalked me for a couple of weeks after. Now I value myself a lot more and would never let someone do something like this again. Edit. Wow. An award. That's such a positive experience for me. Thank you all for your support and understanding. Please take care of yourself and remember you deserve better. Story 10. My husband of five years physically assaulted his sister a couple of nights ago, and I'm not staying around to see it happen to me. ETA, 
he was intoxicated, and she hit him because he was being verbally abusive to me and getting in my face. He then tried to lift her off the ground by her throat. After that happened, I was crying, grabbed my purse, and started walking for about 20 minutes before I called the police. He stayed the night elsewhere and now wants to go to therapy with me. I've been trying to get him to go with me for months, and now that this has become public and he could lose his promotion, he's finally decided to go with me. I told him I want a divorce yesterday, and I'm working on the necessary steps for that to happen. Edit 2. Thank you all for the kind words. I'm trying to read through all the comments and reply when I can. For those saying it's fake, my video evidence suggests otherwise. I'm running around today doing what I can to get out, and I have a wonderful group of friends and family ready to help. And thank you guys for the awards, they're my first. As for my sister-in-law, she's 18 but still lives with her parents for now. She's trying to get out as well, but her mother bullied her out of giving a statement to the police and pressing charges. Her mom cares more about my husband's career than her daughter's well-being. It's the biggest nope of my life. Update. He's frozen my cards, and now I have $100 to my name. I don't think I could hire an attorney even if I wanted to. Story 11. I asked a girl out, and we went to a hangout with some of her friends. She and another guy started having a serious conversation and stepped outside to continue. I subtly asked around, and people were like, that's a whole drama thing. So later, I drove her home and got the scoop. He's an ex who stalled her for years since the breakup, is sure they are going to get back together, and she has a restraining order against him. Okay, I can deal with this. On the next date, she and this guy are standing out in front of her apartment, and he is holding her new puppy. She gets in my car and tells him to put the puppy back. How will he do this? It turns out he has the key to the apartment. The guy with the restraining order. After that very short dinner date, I took her home and then stopped communicating with her. Story 12. I went through a lot with my ex of four years. I should have left him long before this. The final straw was him crashing his car while under the influence of Xanax, alcohol, coke, and weed. If I was with him, I would have been killed. 1000%. I told him that night he couldn't drive, and I begged him to stay at mine. This made him so angry, and he screamed at me, calling me controlling, and then drove off. I found out that he'd crashed because he didn't call me to tell me he got home safe, and I had a gut feeling. After endless calls and him not answering, I used his find my iPhone to see that he was in the middle of a field near his house. I asked his mom to go and see if he was okay, and when she went there, he was upside down in his car in the middle of a field and was incoherent. I had to spend two hours taking different buses to get to the hospital he was in just for him to tell me he hates me and I'm a crazy person for using his find my iPhone. Completely ignoring the fact that maybe no one would have found him until morning if I didn't. Oh, and he also got his dealer to bring him more Xanax and weed while he was in the hospital for a week after the crash. This, along with his new drug addiction, is what finally got me out of my abusive relationship. Every cloud has a silver lining, I guess. Story 13. Not romantic, but this guy is a residential assistant at my university, a student who works with security to help with issues on campus, and had been my friend since first year. When I first met him, I got bad vibes, I'd be mid-sentence talking about something I liked, and he'd pat my bed and ask me to sit with him. My flatmate told me to give him a chance, so I simply did. In the second year, we went for a walk, and he spent the whole time insulting my outfit. It was a little different from what I normally wore, but I'd bought a new hat and was excited to wear it. He told me the hat didn't suit me and would suit him more, he took it off my head and wore it instead, and just trashed my outfit. We get to a forest area while on our walk and he tells me something along the lines of, if somebody assaulted you, you'd be completely defenseless. I told him that my chunky shoes would protect me as I could kick them, and he swept my legs out from underneath me to prove that I couldn't defend myself. He said, your shoes didn't help you there, did they? Later, while I was back home with my parents, he called me around midnight. He did a lot of fishing for compliments. Then he said, if you could have sex with me, you would. I told this person about my sexual trauma, so this hit pretty hard. I spoke to my mental health advisor at the university, and he told me that that was sexual harassment and physical assault, and I should report him. But he's an RA. He's the person I should be reporting these things to. I just avoid him now. Edit. Okay. I've read through some comments. I have a meeting with my mental health advisor who works with the university to talk about it more. It was good to hear from other RAs too. There is unfortunately only one other RA currently, a good friend of mine who defended his behavior in my first year, so I'm not comfortable talking to him. We have limited staff on my campus as it's the rural campus for my university, but we do have security. So I think I'm going to speak to someone higher up soon. Thank you to everybody. The comments have been a real kick up the butt. Edit 2. I told a couple of you guys that I was going to get some pepper spray or something similar just in case something like this happens again. But after researching it, they're actually illegal to carry in the UK. Update. I just spoke to someone on the accommodation team, and they're going to pass it on to the wardens for me. Thank you, everyone, for your advice and support. Story 14. I once told a woman that it must have been wonderful growing up with parents from different cultures after she had been sharing her family's background for 45 minutes on our second date. 
I meant it as a genuine and positive comment, without any irony. However, things took a turn when, after 30 minutes, I had a full emotional breakdown in a crowded bar and made loud comments about my perception of race. The intense stares from other patrons made me feel uncomfortable, and the waiter ended up swooping in with shots for her, offering to pay her bill, and asking if I needed to leave. I felt terrible for possibly triggering some sort of trauma, but I left before finding out what the third date had in store. It was a wild experience, and looking back, it's almost comical. I didn't expect this story to gain so much attention, but I appreciate the support from those who showed love.